In section two, we're going to be looking at chords and arcs of circles. We've already looked at arcs, which are a part of the circle, and a chord is just any line segment where the endpoints of that line segment are on the circle. So we can also talk about an arc of a chord. If we have an arc AB, then it would also have a chord AB. In our first theorem, we're just looking at what it means to be congruent. If the two arcs are congruent, remember measure is about the central angle, so if they have the same central angle, then those arcs would also be congruent, and vice versa. If we look at chords then, since those chords come from those congruent arcs, then this would be the same length as this, as AB and CD would be the same, as long as our arc or our central angle is the same. If I look at how these two are related, I have vertical angles in this picture, and so they have to be congruent, which is also giving me congruent arcs. Notice that we also end up with the lengths being congruent because they're in the same circle. We can also look at this picture here. If I change that central angle, even though these are not vertical angles, I still have congruent angles in the middle, which is still giving me congruent arcs. Notice that the chord, this length here, the orange one and the orange one, are also the same length, so our chords are congruent our arcs are congruent, and the central angles are congruent. And that's what Theorem 12.6 tells us about. Uh, when, our, when our arcs are congruent, our chords are congruent. If our chords are congruent, then our arcs are congruent. And we can prove this just by using similar triangles. All these radi radius, uh, every radius is the same. The central angle is the same. So these are congruent triangles by side angle side, which means that our third side, which is our chord, will be congruent. In this picture, they've given us two congruent circles, which means the circles to be congruent are the same size, so their radius would be the same. So if their radius is the same, and we know that their chords are the same, B, C, and D, F, then that would also mean that these two triangles are congruent, because they have the same radius, which means this angle would be the same, and so B, C, and D, F would also be congruent. We can see that in this picture. If I change my angle, because I have two congruent circles here, that our angles are always the same, and our arc lengths are also the same. But notice if I change the size of one of those circles, even though my arc measures are still equal, my lengths are not the same, so these are not congruent arcs, even though they have the same measure. They need to be defined by the same measure and the same length. The next theorem looks at the distance from a chord uh, to, of a chord to the center. Now remember, if we're looking at the distance, we're talking about the perpendicular from a point. So coming from the center to this chord, I have to take the perpendicular, and from this side over here, the perpendicular. Now, if I've started with congruent chords, notice that those distances, that little purple line there, has to be the same. And that's what this theorem is telling us, that those distances are going to be the same from the center. We, we can use that because if I have a circle, a picture like this, I have two distances from the center, then we want to know the distance here. Notice that this chord length here is given to us 36, this one we could add the parts, we'll notice that it is 36. And since the chord lengths are the same, then their distances from the center are the same, and so x would also be 16. This next group of theorems deals with diameters and perpendicular bisectors to chords, and all of them are similar, they're related to each other, but they have different given and then statements. So let's look at these individually. The first one is, given that we have a chord perpendicular to the di diameter, that means we're starting with the diameter, and then we make a perpendicular line there, and we cut it off so it's just the chords. Now notice that when we do that, this side of the chord over here ends up being equal to this, meaning that that diameter will always be the perpendicular bisector of that chord. It would also mean that we're cutting off congruent arcs here. So the chord is bisected, the arcs are congruent. In 12.9, what we're given is a diameter through the midpoint of a chord. So I've constructed the midpoint of my chord here, so wherever I take this chord, it'll always be in the middle, and I'm going to construct the line that passes through that midpoint and the center. When I do that, notice that I'm getting a diameter uh, because it's passing through the center, but also notice that I'm getting a right angle here. And so that diameter to the midpoint of a chord will always be perpendicular there. The next one, I'm taking the perpendicular bisector of the chord. So again, I have the midpoint, but rather than using the center, I'm just going to take a perpendicular bisector. Notice that even though I've done that, it is still passing through the center of the circle. 
All of these can be proved using congruent triangles if we draw in the radius. This is how we'll use these theorems. In this one we have a radius of 13 inches. So if we look where that would be on our, our picture, that could be OB, but where it's really important is that if we draw these extra lines in here, the radius over on these sides, those will give us right triangles. And so I'll want that 13 over here. We can also look at radius OB uh, being perpendicular to chord CD. So since we have that right angle, we also know that this is the midpoint, meaning that this 24 inches here can be cut in half at X. So we have 12 and 12. And so if I want to find the distance from the center to that chord, uh, then what I would do, this I'm doing B first, is I would look at that right triangle, I would use Pythagorean theorem, and that's going to give me OX equal to 5. We could also be asked about the arc CD. We're told that that's 134 degrees, and we want to know about arc CB. Well, since this is a midpoint, it's cut in half, then that's going to be half of that angle, giving us 67 degrees. In this problem, we're told that it's equidistant to the center. So the only thing we have right now is that this distance from the center is 10. We're also told the radius of G which is 26. So that would be where FG and AG come in. Now all of these triangles would be the same. Even if I also drew triangles here, all four of those triangles are going to be the same. So I want to find the distance AC. So I'm going to use this 26 here with a 10 uh, using that right triangle. If I call this X, all of these would be X. doesn't matter which one. They're all going to be the same length. X squared plus 10 squared is equal to 26 squared which is going to give me x equals 24 when I work that out. So if a to b is 24, but I'm asked to find ac, ac will be double that. Okay, again, I'm looking at this right triangle here. 24, 26, and 10. And so I need the whole length, so I'm going to double that 24 and get a 48. For de, notice that's only one leg here. It's only half that, so that would just be 24. Okay, in this last example, we have a fragment of a circle. We don't know where the rest of it is, and yet we want to know the radius of this. So she's found in fragments. She wants to know how big this thing originally was. Maybe she wants to reconstruct it or something like that. This is how we're going to do it. If I have a part of a circle here, however big it is, what I'm going to do is just draw any two chords. So it doesn't matter how long they are. I'm just going to choose a couple points and measure them. So they could be different sizes. I don't even have to go to the ends on this. But what I need to construct on each of these are the perpendicular bisectors. So I'm going to first construct their midpoints. And then I'll construct a perpendicular line to this one. Remember this theorem over here. Whenever we construct a perpendicular bisector, it's going to pass through the center. And that's the principle that we're going to use. So in this one, we know that this line is going to pass through the center somewhere. We also look over at this one. If I construct this perpendicular line, it will also pass through the center. So we look for their intersection. And so that has to be the center of my circle. Notice that doesn't move as I change the length of my chord. So that's the center of my circle. Now we were asked to find the radius in this problem. So I'll find the radius by taking a new length, going to the circle. I could go to any point on that circle. Let's we'll go here, and I'll measure that length, and that will tell me the radius of my circle. 